Yo, 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 you tuning in to the Notion Podcast. I am your host, Dizzy D. Spill, here with my co-host in the building. Jelani Evans. It's Farmer Poe. What's good with you fellas? How y'all doing, man? How y'all surviving in this, this summer heat? With AC. <laughs> it's so hot, I gotta have my sunglasses on this side, dude. Hey, man, you gotta do what you gotta AC. do, man. It get like that. It and get like that. out the way. But honestly, the heat hasn't been crazy this summer, right? <laughs> Uh, I mean, he been in the house. That's why it's been crazy. It's been crazy. I've been out there because we usually take the kids on a walk, and we haven't been able to do that as often. It just started getting hot in August. Well, I mean, it was it gets only get the hottest in the summertime in August, right? I get, but June and July was like July uh, gets ugly. Was hot. July gets July ugly. was ugly. I don't know. So well, yeah, this July year did was, have the it was three slow digits. to get hot yeah. this year. Yeah, July was right. three. Yeah, bro, I was outside on like the hottest day of the summer. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't go out often. And I, that was the day we had designated and we had got tickets for uh, an event. And then the day came and it was triple digits. And I was like, yeah, um, I'm going out because the money was spent, but we leaving early. Yeah. What? We leaving with fans. Well, I mean, it was a pretty hot summer. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? Working, <laughs> staying cool. Stuff, right? Yeah, he's like, uh, I'm just working. Know. Get you know what I'm saying? Getting shit done and trying to stay cool, staying cool, really. But I'm definitely staying cool. Like I, I cancel stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm canceling and I'm flaking and everything. I don't know what's wrong with people. Like we're not young no more, nah, bro. You know, My man took accountability nah, to a whole different level. Yeah. I'm canceling. I'm flaking. Yeah, straight I'm up. leading people on. I don't. Care. I'm not even leaving nah, people on. Like I'm just old. The way niggas was <laughs> like, yeah, nah. This nigga said, nope. I'm trying to stay cool. And this nigga, I'm leading and I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm nah. I'm, yeah, you gonna pull up? Nah. Yeah. Nah, I'm not. I yeah, wouldn't. Wa- I wouldn't wait up. Yeah, have, have fun. <laughs> Ain't no more. Who out. all gonna be there? Nah, nah, I don't care who is there. <laughs> Just like that comedian I sent nah. you. He's like, I'm, I'm offended. You even asked me, man. Straight up, like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know better. You, you know I'm not. You know I'm not pulling up. Stop that. <laughs> Send me that. <laughs> yo, yo, there was a there was a fight party, and I wanted to go. But then I heard like the conditions, and I was just like, then I thought about the distance. And I was like, nah. Yeah, I watched the fight on my phone. <laughs> I just kept I just kept refreshing My man had the fan on high <laughs> I just kept refreshing IG hope somebody Stream it live So I can see it Nah I don't know. <laughs> the, fan, the fan on high uh, Making a little Auto tune uh, sound Next to it Cause you so close to it And yeah I'm flaking though Don't invite me nowhere I mean um, Better late than never What's y'all uh, How y'all feel about The Montgomery Bow Boy situation man <laughs> Oh the Alabama Sweet Tea Party Yeah Oh, man. Listen, I saw a lot of, I mean, <clears throat> I know a lot of people probably feel like is there are some corny little, like, memes and videos out there. Majority of them. A lot of them are corny. Mm-hmm. Um, but shit, I, honestly, there's so many ironies. To me, that's where the comedy comes in. It's like the truth, the, the actual true uh, ironies. Um, they have January 6th. We have August 6th. And Uh the significance of that is that a lot of people don't know is that what I learned like months ago is this, it's called Black August. So a lot of our revolutions and a lot of revolutionaries Uh were born in the month of August. They call it Black August. Uh I did not know that. Man, look at that, bro. (laughs) Because the sun was burning everything. (laughs) Nah, look at that, bro. It's called Black August. Black August. So the fact that that happened in, in, in Montgomery, Alabama, on that day, they just were praying. To the Those ancestors. Hollow grounds. That's, they were just praying. Yeah, they, you know, they had a, ans- a, yeah. a ceremony for the uh, ancestors probably like yeah. two hours before everything jumped off. That's sacred ground for them black <laughs> folks down there. It's almost was, mm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, popped off on the road. I loved it. I loved it. Once you saw the skipping, you was ah, uh, we don't be skipping. You know what skipping means. <laughs> <laughs> the white it ain't folks out of joy. Know. White folks didn't it know. Is, I mean, it is kind of, it is kind of out of like joy. Like, sure yeah, we finna get that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is some excitement to the skipping, but it's it's not like, you know, what you think it is. If yeah. you see it, if you see the dudes skipping towards you, you put your dukes up. While they clapping, they thought they was like applauding them for what they was doing to him. Like he was like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that means whenever you, bro, that finna, means it's finally my time. That's nonverbal communication. 
<laughs> they offer to whoop your ass. Apparently, there's a new uh, signal now. The hat? The, oh, yeah, the hat Bobby up. Shmurda? Did you see? Did you ever see the hat land? Yeah, did, I did not it see that. It disappeared, right. man. The ancestors caught it and kept it up. They're like, yo, <laughs> the hat's supposed to disappear. Right? <laughs> That's when everybody came in. And they caught that one like, cuckoo. <laughs> Jermichael <laughs> Phelps hit the water. <laughs> they have a bunch of people coming from every which way. I loved it, man, because honestly, the reason I loved it was more than just like, all right, the physical altercation, all right, they beat their ass. It was kind of like, it was beautiful for to see the gathering of so many different demographics of black folks. You yeah, had different, different age tribes. groups. Yeah. That different was generations. Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was very, I, I mean, like, it was crazy, right? But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm glad that people stood up and was like, nah, we're not finna let another black man get beat up mm-hmm. or hurt mm-hmm. or embarrassed. Like, mm-hmm. nah, we're like, we're done with that. Yeah. And I, I mean, like, honestly, Kind of need to see more of that instead of people pulling out phones. Now, there were some people who pulled out phones. Mm-hmm. Most of them was on the boat, so I guess they wasn't swimming. And that's cool because yeah. they probably couldn't, you know. Um, but, you know. It's, they served it's, a purpose, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody they everybody served. couldn't fight because then there wouldn't be no footage. Right. Um, <laughs> you had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, like, uh, from a different standpoint, <clears throat> it'd be nice if we could unify for other reasons outside mm-hmm. of just fighting altercations. That's the main reason mm-hmm. why I brought it up. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because that right. shows mm-hmm. that, I mean, it, it, it's kind of unfortunate that that has to be the example, but that shows right there that we are more than capable, you know, to come together and really like defend each other. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, just support somebody's business, but speak up when you really believe something is wrong. You know what I mean? It's real easy to kind of like put, it's kind of easy to to put somebody in a in a certain category, right? And then it's just like, well, that ain't you know that ain't me. They didn't say it to me, you know that that was a trend for a minute. Well, I'm not in it, or that ain't it. Sometimes people need to speak up, and people need to stand up and be like, no, nah, that's not okay, and I'm not gonna let it go down like that. Yeah, and that's what, and that's how that came across. And yeah. I'm not mad at that at all, but it needs to be uh, on a more consistent basis, and mm-hmm. not referring just to violence. It, I mean. <laughs> Violence, yeah, but not physical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mental. So it's just, I don't know. And I have mixed emotions about it, too, because, I mean, there's one. As you get older, you're like, yeah, we don't, you don't need to handle things based off violence and X, Y, and Z. But they at the started same, it. But at the same time, though, <laughs> history, right? Everything that this country has has been based off of what? Violence. Some form of violence. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So I think we should. I'm not saying take it like a grain of salt. I mean, we should consider how how things are handled as far as what type of violence needs to be happening. And it's definitely not shouldn't be the first choice, but it's going to be an option in some cases. And history has shown that. So I got two things. <clears throat> One is based on uh, a lot of people saying that. You know, I hear people saying they don't condone violence. So I'm, but there's that. And then also I have a question. Mm-hmm. So cond- people like say they don't condone too. violence, right? Like. Uh huh. I condone violence. Yeah. Like, what are we talking? About? Because at the end of the day, if somebody hits you and you're attacking you, then you condone violence at the end of the day to defend yourself. If right? you're not intervening to stop it, you condone violence. Is what I was gonna say. I condone violence with somebody defending themselves. Yeah. So I don't know if people have the same meaning when they're saying that, but I think I think it's a trend to say it. Yeah, I but deep down inside, people condone, don't really. I condone violence. This country condone. I don't violence. condone violence. That yeah. is crazy. Now smacking you like, put you do. Oh, I exactly. thought you didn't condone violence. Exactly. Take it like a man, like, right? Just, <laughs> yeah, I condone violence. But then, all right. So my question is, I think, yeah. Do you think that there needs to be a call of action for us to kind of wake up at times? Because most of the time that we try to have these rallies and things of that nature, it's not really based around a particular situation all the time. Uh-huh. But then when there is, like when we all do kind of rally it with each other, there's like this national issue that happens. Like maybe in a small town, somebody dies or uh-huh. uh, whatever issue that might be against their civil rights. Then we kind of like want to gather just like that fight. Yeah. Right. Started a trend. It's it had, like, the thing I think that we're going to have to try to get around is 
gathering when there is not a issue current. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be issue, but yeah. I mean, like a, a issue that we all are finding out about on the news. Yeah, well, it's kind of crazy because it's like, do you feel like we need to wake up? But I feel like because of everything that has happened, if you look at all the different situations, altercations, people being killed and everything, everybody should already be woke. That energy should already be trying to be exerted. There should be unity. There should be understanding. We should be trying to come together, work together, grow and be on one accord already. It but should, you know, that, you comes know in, that comes in waves with us, though. It, That's what I'm the saying. Thing, it, only com- it goes up and then it goes down. And uh-huh. then the only thing about it is only regarding like, after a situation has happened right Mm -hmm. but the thing about it is if we could get on that page we could prevent a lot of stuff from happening not not just to people individually but as far as in like politics look what they just did to you you uh ups Mm -hmm. you know how much they're making six figures my nigga uh, a full-time worker is making six figures yeah that's crazy that was crazy how much they're making like 50 or 60 yeah something dollars 60 it was, I thought it was like six. Oh no no! Oh, you talking about hourly? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's something That's crazy. crazy. No, the crazy thing to me is how long they could have been making that. It's been a billion dollar company for years, so years. it's like that's great that that happened. But a Wait, lot of a lot of people. So they the UPS workers they went on strike apparently. Um, and, and their I'm, union. I just kind of found this out recently as well. They went on strike, and the power that they have, like UPS, is not gonna the the amount of money that they would have to spend in court. And being sued by it's a it's an international company, uh-huh. and so putting them the workers putting a stop to it and saying we're not going to work, they had to listen and come to some type of conclusion. understanding. Yeah, uh-huh. like that's uh, but the numbers. We 100%. As the, we we're going to feel the brunt of that though. Whoever tries to go through PS, it's just going to raise the prices. Up, so. Yeah, okay. that's okay. I'm no, I don't mind. I mean, that's okay because I, I mean, at the end of the day, we're gonna pay for it if we want. Yeah, if we trying to shit with UPS, yeah. I'm trying to work for them. I'm apply. Yeah, no, look, after this, I'm, I'm sitting there like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what can Brown do for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah now I, I know. Shorts and shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already in Brown. I'm, I'm already. My guy gonna throw on the shirt and go to work. Yes. Show up at your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just signed for this. What you doing? Nah, trying to real. eat? Nah, I agree though, dog. I think I think this should be uh, looked at, and it should it should be explored more beyond as an example of like what could happen, what needs to happen. I mean, we talk about it on the on the show all the time, but nah, I definitely agree. Like, it's one of those things where it's like now that you see an example, what are you gonna do with it? There's something that you shared. Uh, one of them two dudes was rapping at the end of it and said, we're not, we're not outnumbered. We're out organized. Out organized. I a hundred percent believe in that. We're out organized. Like when you think about the black dollar, right? Mm-hmm. Millions. Mm-hmm. Billions. 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 Right. And so it's just like six hours. If we could unite, come together, be on one accord, and move differently, mm-hmm. we could force things to change. Mm-hmm. So with, when we say things like that, <clears throat> I agree. We obviously. get canceled. No, oh, no. No, 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 I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. But I think what we get stuck on and trying to, what why we keep being stuck on that same premise or question is we did it in the past mm-hmm. and there were du- government operations uh-huh. to prevent not only demolish and and dismantle those um types of uh businesses or uh-huh. um even uh, towns that like uh-huh. had the uh what was it jonesboro brother like four uh, or five so, towns they turned into yes. lakes yeah um <laughs> yeah. And so cointel pro there's a lot Do of research there's a lot of government um, operations that prevented that to and and also there's a mentality that's that was part of that that we are it's difficult to get out of because we don't trust each other yeah and we don't believe in each other nor ourselves at times yeah and so getting around that like we're stuck on that because in the back of our self in our subconscious we are, we know that there are um entities out there that are there to prevent us from being able to kind of do what we need to do. Need to mm-hmm. do. I mean, so I think we kind of blame ourselves a lot, although there is a accountability that needs to happen. I think we blame ourselves a lot 
like why we can't do this why we don't do that and it's in our past we could it's only maybe 10 15 years ago so i think there's mental hurdles yeah but i think one of the biggest things that needs to happen and this is just from working in the workforce um you know we talked about accountability a lot but we also but i feel like we highlight it based on a um on a personal level and i think what needs to happen is we need to hold each other accountable um, it's not that you have to enforce it publicly, but mm-hmm. really hold each other accountable um, more often. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not really big on the, you know, how they do it on social media. A lot of celebrities and stuff like that, they want to hold each other accountable and make a post and you need to do this, that, and the other. Because the the first thing that I'm going to agree with when they have a rebuttal is, you got my phone number, why didn't you call me? But I do think that what needs to happen is we need to hold each other accountable more often because I think that is the difference between our culture and everyone else is that there's a lot of accountability from the other side coming toward you. Like, Hey, you dropping a ball, you know, you're fumbling the bag, you're doing this, you're doing that. It also has to be a certain understanding with that though. Right. Because a lot of things aren't um, received in the same spirit that they're given. Right. When you mm-hmm. try to hold other people accountable, they take offense to it. And yeah. understanding that it's not to get at you or make you feel any type of way. It's to keep you on your toes and to help you continue to progress and move forward. They say iron sharpens iron. So you have to take it that way yeah. and have that understanding. Most of the time it's not taken that way. It's yeah. offending. Why are you all in mind? And why you got to, if you mind your, it's like, I'm just trying to look out for you, my guy. Like, you, you know gotta, what I'm saying? You got to get back to family. Man. Yeah. You got to get back to family. And yeah. the reason I say you got to get back to family is because that's where they, that's who they target. Dismantling our, all those other groups, uh-huh. their family structure has not been dismantled. Yeah. So they have hierarchies. Yeah. They have respect for the cultural values, mm-hmm. morals that their mom, grandmother all instilled. In. Yeah. There is a cultural expectation. Yeah. For us, we don't have that expectation of each other. We don't respect our elders. We don't respect the youth. What well, we, we do, yeah. but in general. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to, that's why I say we, because I can't just say those, yeah, yeah, y'all. Yeah, 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 nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> so, but yeah, we, we don't have that, those cultural values. I mean, that family structure. Um, the family nucleus yeah. is definitely damaged. Yeah. And so, in order for there to be kind of like a, ability to do what these other groups are successful and able, and able to do the family structure has to be be structured and yeah that's going to be a task in itself well the, re- the the reason why it's going to be a task is because on top of us lacking candor with each other the other issue is um denouncing certain things yeah. we kind of have to make that sacrifice to say the ignorance, certain ignorance is just not okay. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's when, you know, what Jelani was explaining, then it turns into you're being a hater and you're just this, that, and the other. Are you judging me? You're judging. Shame. I mean, I'm not Shame. judging. I'm yeah. just calling a spade a spade, right? I'm yeah. It is what it is. Like, shame is what we think. We see, shame we, needs not. We, we try to, like, make our, because we've been so traumatized, we try to make the things that have been negative aspects or things that were looked upon as negative ab- about us we try to say everything that's negative is good we try to turn everything that's everything that's negative don't need to be turned into a positive yeah there's no need for us to say that the body f- uh structure of some of our um female uh <laughs> yeah. african-american women yeah the the lizzo types yeah. that's not healthy yeah for especially for us yeah. so for us that like shame is good and I, I don't mean to point out. I'm not combating. But she at was, the same uh, time, she is, she's up in the news right now and for something like I'm about this. to say, so she's I in the news for those I, that exact type I, of stuff right now. Right. But shame, like the things that we, the other families, we know that a lot of families, they can't bring certain people to the house. They yeah. can't, um, they can't do certain things because they go against the, the, the structure yeah the they try to normalize the things that are not okay to make everybody comfortable right. when unfortunately everybody's never going to be comfortable yeah and it's shame just not is good happen. because it it weeds out the things that need to be weeded out yeah i mean and, dif- and discomfort brings about change yeah yeah so it's necessary yeah, if there's the no shame, such thing as wrong then you know if you want justice for certain things it's like well how, how is that going to be possible but 
yeah, it's just like you said, like there's real, there's, there's a lot of reality that people are trying to detach from, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that's not going to work, man. It can't, it can't work. It, it can't won't work. work. It can't work. And it, it, it hasn't been working. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, it creates more uh, chaos. And it's funny because um, it relates to something else I want to talk to y'all about. Tory Lane's situation. Ooh. When we talk, uh, we're going to talk about shame and we're going to talk about culture I, and I right and wrong. I don't, I don't, um, like, I'm not familiar with the legal system to that extent. I don't, mm-hmm. but I feel like 10 years is um, a lot. I feel like that's a little excessive. Like, I, and they say three felony counts, right? Three mm-hmm. charges. I don't know, like, what's the minimum for a felony charge? Is it, is it a year? Yeah, I don't know. But You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know enough to be help like, us, yo. Help us lawyers. And now, I mean, I also know that. Scholars. So that there is also, because there was a gun involved, right? Yeah. And so that could hike things up. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't have a license, like, I, I own guns. And I have a gun license, but I don't have a license to carry concealed, right? Right. So if I'm just rolling around with my gun and I get caught up, I can catch a serious charge. Well, if you're not concealing it, no plan. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> because even if like I can travel with my with my with my gun, but it has to be I have to travel with it a certain type of way. It has to be locked up. Things have locked to be separated. Up, the clip has to be taken yeah, out, and, yeah. and all of that. And you know, yeah. Also. It, I think we were all unaware of what he was actually charged with because he wasn't yeah. really charged with shooting. So, what? I mean, I wasn't familiar with that. Do you, are you familiar with some of the things he was charged with? Let me see if I can find Reckless it. endangerment, dun, dun, maybe. Dun. Also, um, dun, 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 dun. yeah, there were like three charges, but they were, none kind of them not. were actually <laughs> like he was charged with shooting. Hmm. So, getting that. You know what? That's even easier. Well, I think that might be, and that's, and that's crazy too, because like, all right, if he didn't get convicted of shooting her, but he got convicted of other things, is that hard to argue if he was an individual with the gun? If he was though. So we all I know, said, we that's why I said if. No, oh, that's the hard part is like. I think the part that bothers me the most, because I didn't follow all the details of the story. I think it bothered me the most. Number one is, is us again. Mm-hmm. Number two. um from what I was hearing and some of what I was reading, it seemed like nobody had their story straight. Okay. I got them. Assault with a firearm, mm-hmm. illegal possession of oh, a firearm, fire. and negligent discharge of a gun for shooting the victim. Yeah. Kind of sounds like he was charged with shooting her. But not exactly. Yeah, but not exactly. So, so it's not like attempted. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Got you. And that's what a lot of lawyers try to do to win. They're going to try to find where in the legal system you were wrong. Say, all right, we're going to charge you with this. We're going to charge you with that. We're going to charge you with that. You know what I mean? Ten and they try to attack that. Time, that's a very, and very and long time. And, but, all right. Hope you've been working on music this whole time because he's going to drop some albums. I mean, he's got fire, but he's getting deported. So there's that. And then. What I feel like a Canada jail is a Canada prison is much smoother than the U.S. prison. I don't know when he's getting deported. Is he getting deported oh. after his sentence or like? Yeah. Why would they give it to Canada? Like, hey, Canada, hey, put him in jail. Get your man. Yeah, yeah. yeah get that's, your man. That's like you go over somewhere and get caught up, and they're like, "Here, put him in jail." I'm like, "All right, nigga, we finna go somewhere else." <laughs> put him in jail. So I don't know, um, but. He did play himself up. He mm-hmm. did kind of play himself. Yeah. Elaborate. Um, one, let's just Meg hated. Let's just say that she did hate. She was hating on him. Um, but he played himself, I think, in the way in which he presented himself to the public eye before and during the case. Mm-hmm. So the judge did say that he wasn't going to um, hold any of his antics against him because you are presumed innocent, so you should act as if you were innocent. Uh-huh. Um, but he really did kind of play himself in the public eye and like making it, it, it could be perceived by others that he didn't have remorse. Although 
he did have instances of kind of saying that. Uh-huh. It just was like, it, it wasn't a good idea to be doing what he was doing. So music, um, punching on, uh, uh, what's his name? August Alcina. Uh-huh. Uh, Cause we live in the era of everybody see everything, whether you want to or not, not more, you know, back in the day you could get a jury where everybody might not be hip to what's going on, Yeah. but everybody is getting shit across their timeline. Whether you really actually are interested in what it is or not, because Plus, you have, we got many computers. You can look yeah. up anything. Like you see yeah. how yeah, fast you I don't even got to look charges. it up. You don't yeah. even got to look it up though. Like you could just be going down your timeline on Facebook or Instagram, wherever. And, and somebody boom. else that already posted this shit and now it's hidden. Yeah. And so that's the bad thing is like, you have a big name like, with a big artist. And, and so the eyes are on you. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So, that just wasn't a good idea. And the juries could say, oh, I don't know who Tory Lanez is, but most people are going to have heard of the situation. Absolutely. And the people are just going to have their opinions based on. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's never going to go away. The, the opinions. Myself, I don't believe it. I don't either. I don't know what happened, right? It, nothing added up. Nothing made sense. Nothing yeah. seemed to align. And that's why I have a belief And so I just don't know what to say about everything. All I can say is 10 years is a lot. My issue, though, is the way we say certain things. There needs to be words added or removed from some of the famous phrases that we tend to say. Like? Men shouldn't hit women and protect black women. I know it's Men shouldn't hit women. First, like, what do you mean? Like, that's <laughs> the word. People should hit people. Nobody should put their hand. And you know who got in trouble? Because it makes it seem like it's okay. Yeah. For them to do it to us, us, and also protect black women that are going against a black man that we don't believe or know what either one of y'all telling the truth. So it's like protect black women and not protect black men. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So I think sometimes. Those things, when we say certain things, it gives the perception that you mean fuck the other side. Gotcha. And I I think that kind of people will and have been interpreting it that way. Well, it's it's crazy because initially I thought like when it was like protect black women, it was pertaining to more along the health lines and the hospitals and the amount of women that were dying because of complications with birth. Yes, that's where it started. Right. Meg started using it to campaign. And so, of course she did. Um, well, I'm just, you know, because it seems like things can be easily misconstrued and people will take it and run with it. But mm-hmm. from my understanding, protect black women have to do with more of the, the health system and things of that nature. Yeah. And then I think also some of the situations like Sandra Bland and then um, the sister. Oh, Bland, also uh, the mass kidnappings and abductions for pertaining sure. to black sure. women. Um, more than sure. any other ethnicity. Yep. Yep. So I mean, like between the abductions rate skyrocketing and the health system, you know what I'm saying? Not I'm, not intentionally, I want to say, but kind of like just mm-hmm. picking off our sisters. It was like you know protect black women because these things are happening to them when they're walking to their car, or when they're pregnant yes. and giving yes. birth, and you know what I'm saying. So there was a specific uh, energy behind it in a meaning for the saying in the first place but then Definitely. people like I said took it and ran with it for a different meaning it's like so protect black women and to hell with the black men yeah yeah well, they need to pick different they need to pick different movements and what I mean by that is if there's something that you want to stand behind don't try to attach it to another movement because I'm getting tired of that too you know what I'm saying I'm getting so tired of all of the different because mo- now mm-hmm. you have a scenario like the woke movement you have people that are not of the culture using the word woke and the way that we used it was totally different. Yeah. So now when you're talking about politics, when you're talking about policies and things like that, the first thing people want to say, Oh, this woke culture, this woke culture. And I'm going to be honest. If you are not from the culture and you say woke culture to me, it's a trigger. I may not react it, it and I may not, but it's a trigger to me. Cause yes. it's like, I can tell you don't even know the, or like look up, look up the definition of woke on YouTube and you will see a whole bunch of videos of people not from the culture explaining that woke culture is about political shit and it's not it's the awakening of the mind and 
get having knowledge of self for African American people specifically because we had our history removed and those who were obtaining knowledge, whether it was from the five percent nation of gods and earths, whether it was from the uh, nation of Islam, whether it was from the Moorish temple, there was a awakening of knowledge. And so that is what woke culture is, is knowledge of self. And so these people started hijacking our shit like they usually do mm -hmm. and turn it into something else and they weaponize it. They take everything. Yeah. You were sharp with it. I had to give them the sword. <laughs> I had to give them the sword. You know what I mean? I tried to, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I thought it was off with their heads, but that's cool too. <laughs> Are you trying to kick knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you're hundred percent right, bro. And and I and I you know, I think that that we our culture needs to do due diligence and start that's what i mean by accountability that's what's lacking you know what i'm you saying know me you know yeah I am. i'm big on that that's what's lacking the whole due diligence the research getting a deeper understanding mm -hmm. finding information for yourself instead of piggybacking on other things and just running with it like you need to know the truth you need to know the definitions you need to know the root to have a better understanding right and know that we got to start listening to a lot of, and asking questions from our um uh, um elders in our family like we got to be inquisitive and start asking them questions about what like the history and shit like that people don't ask questions at all they yeah. make assumptions start asking them questions and, mm -hmm. and really understanding what experiences they had in order to kind of better because we have we 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 forget and the reason why music is so good i mean we we are people that are express feelings very well in, yeah in um in the ways of like art mm -hmm. But we have we come from an oral tradition. Yeah. So oral tradition is most right. not written necessarily. And so asking questions of our our ancestors, our I mean not our ancestors, our elders and our family mm -hmm. and even just speaking to each other. Yeah. It has to happen a lot more. And we and we have to not be so intimidated by knowledge because I yeah. feel like we struggle with that too. We come across somebody that is way more knowledgeable about something that we're into. Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency to um, resent that instead of embracing it. Like, you know what? I can learn a lot from this brother. I can learn a lot from this sister. I can learn a lot from mm -hmm. this elder. But because they kind of showed up and exposed what you lack, you want to take it as a diss or you want to take it uh, mm -hmm. or you, you want to let your insecurities um, show. Mm -hmm. And there was something that uh, Deion Sanders, he said um, in a, in an interview one time, he was like on a panel and he said, don't let my confidence trigger your insecurity. Play a hater. <laughs> and I love that. I Get love that because ground. that's, that's the, that's the definition of what we be dealing with, with Play each other sometimes. So. It's okay to be ignorant. Wrong. Yeah. Because we're all ignorant of something. You sure. I mean? And all that means is that you don't know, you don't understand, you're not aware that is, I hate this negative that should connotation that, should that the word has taken on. So it's like, yeah. so I like you ignorant. Oh, well you want to fight about it? Like yeah. I want to fight because you don't know nothing. No, I'm just yeah, trying like to if, tell you, you know, you like, can learn from somebody. You can, oh, that's an extra level. I could go up. Yeah. Man, but I, we also gotta, we also gotta do our part in explaining that to the youth because there was a point in time when we were young. Right. And if somebody didn't know the standard on something, he was like, what? Oh, you stupid. You don't. Oh, but, God. but there's an issue with that. Yeah. We were willing to listen. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's almost like what you said about uh, inquiring and talking to your elders. We have a certain level of respect yeah. for our elders. This younger generation, they lack the respect. Mm -hmm. Right. They will not listen. They think they know everything because of internet uh -huh. right they don't want to listen because they feel like you uh reprimanding them or you're talking down to them or you're hating or something uh -huh. like it is it, it just it doesn't seem to make and i'm just like where did that come from the leadership the people that Lack of? the well the people that they think are in a position of leadership <laughs> are false are false leaders exactly influencers it's it's, it's that but even deeper than that stupidity. is there is no um there's not a standard there's not a code so you no. had to respect your elders not on not only because you had to respect your elders because they put hands on you but you had to respect your elders because by the time you got down the block your mama your auntie your uh, whoever everybody already knows so the information didn't travel about this disrespectful child when it got popped by three, four people. Bro, yeah. I remember getting checked by my neighbor. Yeah. Okay? 
Yep, they knew your parents. Yeah, they you check say, it. Hey, I'm finna go down on third to tell your mom. Remember that saying, mm-hmm. it takes a village? Yeah. It takes a village. Yes. So, you feel me? Like, I had to be respectful, whether it was a neighbor, teachers. the corner store, mm-hmm. teachers, you feel me, friends of the family, everything, because I can act up at the store, then my mom go to the store, and she hear about it, then she gonna check me, then pops gonna check you, and then you mess around, see auntie, like, yeah, I heard you was acting up yep. at the, like, what the? Because nobody, that was Thursday. Nobody can check kids anymore, <laughs> but their own parents. And parents aren't checking their kids. Exactly. And they're allowing them to disrespect other people. Like, I don't, yep. not mind, no. Man, look. No. Yep. Mind, no. Not to fuck around and disrespect nobody else in front of me because I'll beat all the sense out of you. And I really won't. I mean, but I'll check you hard enough. To that's how we got, that's how we got canceled back then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> canceled. We got canceled for real. You know what I'm saying? We, they, they canceled the certain behaviors that was not going to be accepted. That's yeah. not okay. Now, I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Now the council is like, oh, we're just done with you and the entire, and it's like, what, what people don't understand is that nobody's, everybody has blood on their hands as far as making mistakes and making the wrong decision. But the problem is, is that when it's being exposed and highlighted, it's supposed to just like, for, I'll give you one of my favorite examples that it's kind of died down. You look at somebody like Will Smith that had like pretty much a squeaky clean career and he made a dumbass decision. Oh, now we got to cancel him and he's this and he's that. And, da, 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 and it's like, so. That means that everybody that feels that way is perfect. That means you've never you've never had to be corrected. You have to be corrected. You have to be sat down. And even if you already know where you went wrong, you still have to understand the effects of your decisions. And we do got to like in hindsight, give it to it. like for a man to go through life in the public eye for so many years and not have any hiccups and everybody love you and like you. We got to give you at least one of those to, to go around like and. Whether we agree or not, it was a situation that had to do with his wife. Uh-huh. You agree or not? I don't agree with what he did. I don't think, but you have to, okay, this man did something that had to do with respect or disrespect of his wife. Uh-huh. And he ain't really, he ain't been squeaky clean. Give him that. Yeah. He ain't killed a nigga. Yeah. The man's still standing. He ain't got no bumps, bruises, none of that. It's right. Just, now. It's a manhood too. Right. <laughs> And the thing is, swelling went down. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is like, my bad. The thing is, you gotta look at it from a standpoint of that's what I'm saying. Nobody really know. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. There's a certain era. This era right here doesn't really know how to properly discipline. It's either you, you, you're either good today, we throw you away tomorrow. But there's no actual culture around discipline. Now, when you go to the past. There's been more harsh ways of discipline. And then as time has went on, it's been a little bit lighter. But now we've gotten to a point in time where there's no discipline. It's just we throw you away yeah. and that's it. Yeah. And you don't learn anything like Everybody that. Everybody needs whooping. Everybody needs to be reprimanded. Yeah. yeah that's, how you, that's, how you, that's how you learn. Right. Some people are not good with the verbal, like, listen. They're not, they're not good with listening mm-hmm. to direction. The police going to beat your ass. Some people are going to talk to you. Some mm-hmm. people are going to beat your ass. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying either one is better than the other. Right. But I can say. There's always another there option. There is sometimes that need for, a, you know what I mean? One of those a couple of times. Well, I mean, that's the era we come from. Yeah. We come from an era where it was like you didn't because there's a risk. And of, it's the era of trauma. Yeah. We came from a no, we did. Period. But there, but there's still, there was, there was, if there was nothing else left, if you do this, this is going to happen, right? There was that. What did Michael Chase say? He said, uh, when it was writing all the amendments, he said, uh, um, uh, the first one was uh, freedom of speech. And the second one, second one was right to bear arms. And basically his point was, I'm going to say whatever I want to say, but I should probably have a gun just in yes. case. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's like there's that. consequences. I like that. There's consequences like to that. everything that you say and do. That's and that's what talk. people got to understand. I don't care that's if it's if it's 2023 or if it's year 3000, there's going to be a, 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 a action. There's going to be a reaction for every action. Right. So that's very true. That's what that's what I think is lacking. And that's what people they're going to understand one way or another, because everything as far as tradition always has a sense of coming back full circle. Yeah, but it's kind of odd that we live in a 
in these societies that are always at war and they will if someone does when someone did something to the united states what did we go do the response was not to talk it to them it was to go and shoot at, back at them bro the united right? states being other people business yeah so i'm the United States is a bully. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what you say. It doesn't make sense to me. Those times the United States things. been watching Baki too much. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We'll fight. It's, it's just, uh, <laughs> we will fight. You watch your mouth. So, uh, I don't know if y'all caught it. the The circus that happened at the Lil Dirt concert. Oh, yeah, listen, I, I, I found out about that last night. I don't listen to none of these niggas, but I'm in tune with everything. So everything about what's going on. I'm just trying to understand why we go from a gun threat to let's loot. Yeah, they went crazy in that like, little um because that's the it only took one person. That's it only air, take one person. That's right? the air we live in. The mob right. um snatching shit. Like let's be honest, it's a, it, there's a, there's this monkey see monkey do energy yeah. with the younger generation, right? Mm-hmm. Like think about it, like just for instance, how many times have you seen somebody do a meme or a reel and it be funny and then next thing you know, oh uh, everybody's sharing it and you see it across your timelines, reenact the hell it. It's a monkey see monkey do. So it only took for one person to go back there and grab something, right? Mm-hmm. And so then everybody else follows suit and then next thing you know, there's chaos. Yeah. When everybody could have got popped because apparently there was an active shooter. Mm-hmm. I think three people got hit. I think somebody died. Oh, so somebody so there was yeah, it was a shooting up in there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I and so in the midst of chaos, you add to the chaos Either by stealing. Right by looting. That's stupid. That's because these youngsters live in the era of seeing everybody doing that shit all across America on on Snapchat, TikTok, and all that shit. That's the like that's what they own. My um my of course it was in Chicago. And you know, Chicago's already the youth is already getting a bad label. And I do think that is a lot of I think there should be more attention in that area because of how bad it because it's been bad like this for like over a decade in Chicago. Really, that's in the, the thing hood, about it though. Spot. The thing yeah. about it is like with Chicago, like that's almost like a special case just based on the fact of the high level of gang and gun violence that has been going on forever. Mm-hmm. So then it just continues to be repeated. Yeah. And yeah. the youth keep getting sucked in at a younger age and you know what I'm saying? All of this craziness. So it's our, they already have like a warped kind of messed up mentality regarding how to carry yourself, how to operate. So I mean Yeah. It's not I, I don't want to say what do you expect, but I mean like without there being any guidance leadership, without uh-huh. there being a uh, a special attention to what's going on there the way that it should be, I mean like that's kind of the end result. Yeah. You know, unfortunately yeah, Nah, that's real. This is horrible. Yeah. That's the, and that, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that stuff, there has to be some point in time or there has to be a, you know, a certain movement where that behavior is not acceptable because you will find some, um, activists that I don't want to say will justify, but try to explain, you know, look at it with, you know, look at the environment they're in and A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah. That's all understandable. And that's all true. But the behavior should not be accepted regardless. No, not at all. You see not what I'm saying? The behavior is not okay. We we understand why they behave like that, but that doesn't mean it's okay. Yeah. And the reason why they're acting like that isn't okay either. And sometimes we don't even need to know the why because it's not okay. 100%. If somebody slapped my wife, I don't care why you did it. She I care about why I'm going to do fire. what I do to you. You see what I'm saying? Nah, I don't care what I'm about to do to you. You know what I'm saying? You catch on fire from all these this. shots that go inside your body. Okay, Pac, go ahead. Somebody can suplex. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's I just, got 90, I don't understand, 99 man. suplex videos in the same <laughs> folder. Ready. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's a stupid situation. Because, I mean, is. at the end of the day, you look at it, it's like there was an active shooter. People actually got hit. And instead of being concerned about your safety, you're trying to get out of there. You're still in T-shirts. That don't even make sense, bro. I'm, I'm like the I'm line trying, of, I'm there's trying. no logic Time or what, like whether it was in, 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 uh, as a result of that or what, I don't, I feel like it was kind of like, it, huh? it was, it was like, it happened, people shooting, people running, then people started looting in the midst of people running and maneuvering. Yeah. yeah I feel like it was, a uh, no pun intended, but a trigger reaction. Yeah. Yeah. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. this happened, boom, boom. Oh, my gosh, it's crazy. Well, I'm going to get some around, stuff. Y'all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's like everybody's already going, moving around, renting, and, and it's already hectic. Yeah. The last thing people are concerned about are the clothing because there's an active shooter. Mm-hmm. People have gotten hit. Right. So it was almost like, well, if this was ever a good opportunity, but it wasn't. Though. It wasn't. Imagine, imagine trying to steal some shirts and you getting shot behind it. Right, and having to explain that to somebody's mama. If you make it, oh yeah, to somebody's mama. Yeah, like right. It just, it just, it made no sense. There was no logic involved. It was definitely a, a I guess you can call it ignorance. I want to say they didn't know no better, I'm, which is kind of scary. Okay, you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like instead of like running to safety or getting to a safe spot, you chose to loot. As a youth. I think it's just that energy, that adrenaline, doing something very dangerous. Yeah. And trying to get away with it in a dangerous situation. Yeah. And being the cool one, and there's so many people, I'm not going to be the one. If the situation is happening to me, it's all fair. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this. Like, right. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's one wild. of the huge problems, man. That's wild. Crazy. Um. I do want to get onto, I would say, a more progressive direction with something that Jermaine Dupri did. He, um, you know, we were talking about coming together, you know, with the uh, scenario with the Montgomery Boat Boys. Um, Jermaine Dupri had basically started his own movement where he was no longer going to do business with people where it's not really beneficial to the camaraderie the camaraderie of which he's affiliated with. And I, I love that he made some, um, he made a couple tweets talking about it, but from what I got from what he said is it's like, if it's not going to be beneficial to the to culture, the group, to the, to the culture, I'm not working with you. He didn't care about how deep your pockets were. I know you got the, the statements, Jelani, you want to mm-hmm. go ahead and, and says, uh, Jermaine pre cuts off business partners who are clueless to the culture. Mm hmm. Said no more business deals with people who have deep pockets but are clueless to the culture. Hip hop fifty resolution. Everything for me starting tomorrow is value based. I love that. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's corny though. Cause why weren't you already operating like that? Because I think that's the ignorance. In my opinion. How he just never found that out. That's what I'm saying. Jermaine well, Dupree. Well You got money. You got deep pockets. Something for a just minute, happened. Now. Yeah, something probably did just happen. It had to. But one of the things that I understand is if you look at a lot of these artists when they first came out and all of the, you know, we always like to talk about the accolade, especially right now with 50 years of hip hop. Right. And you look at what they've done for the industry. When you look back, because we're kind of at the age or a little bit older than they were when they were in their prime years. There's so much knowledge that they didn't have that you hear artists talking about today. Like the independent industry is well is well over grossing a billion, right? Independently, three sixty deals are laughed at in the music industry, uh-huh. right? <laughs> what what happened? I mean, we I mean that's a it's a rhetorical question, but what ended up happening with a lot of these artists is they started understanding. Documentaries came out, you know, when you look at what happened, you know, groups like TLC where they're only getting a certain amount of change out of every album and albums are $13 an album. And then when they look up and they realize that the majority of the major labels, the owners don't even look like you. That's why we celebrate people like Diddy and Jay-Z and um, Russell Simmons. Also the shift in distribution. Yeah. The the distribution shift. So when you, when you look at that and then these guys are now older, right? They're looking at it like, damn, like what could I have done or where could we have been if I had this knowledge? Because you got to understand a lot of the knowledge that people are getting now is instantaneous because of Instagram and people getting on their live. Look at all of the actors and celebrities that are getting online and just getting fed up and just saying, this is what's going on and I don't like it. Versus everybody being quiet because they have 40 phone bills they have to pay. Or I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just put my head down and look the other way because I got I, I to gotta, I gotta make sure I, make, I pay my mom's mortgage. So I think that's 
what happened. And I think that some of these people probably did know. Jermaine Dupree probably did know, but we're also talking about somebody that's been bankrupt uh, a couple times throughout their career. You see what I'm saying? So I, I commend it. And, and from where I'm standing, I commend it. I just want to, I would like when, when people make a stance like that, I will say this. When people make a stance like that, I want to see the breakdown of what you're doing. I don't want to see a statement made in 2023 and then we don't really see the action, things that are put into action behind that. A lot of people say stuff online, especially entertainers. Well, I'm not doing this no more. Or I'm working with, you know, I'm working with people that aren't getting the right exposure, but you don't ever hear nothing about it ever again. It's kind of like a sweepstakes when Taco Bell say, hey, win a Lamborghini. But you ain't never seen nobody uh, pull up in a Lamborghini eating tacos, eating tacos yeah. like, yo, it's true. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I just want to see the follow up yeah. behind it. If you're going to make a statement like that publicly, you need to show the progress and publicly my, as well. I, I even have a question. Like, that's cool. He made that statement. But where is he at as far as hip hop is concerned today? Where is his impact or influence today? I think he does a lot in Atlanta from where, where he's at. Like I mean, he throws one of his impacts is um one of the top female rappers right now. Who? Um Lotto. He found her. He ain't dealing with her though. But I mean it's an impact. Mm. I think he does more in Atlanta. She's mediocre, but I feel what you're yeah. saying. I think he does more <laughs> he does more um in Atlanta though. Like he throws behind the scenes. No, he'll throw like festivals and things like that in oh, the in okay. the um in in the Atlanta area, which I'm not opposed to that either. I think more artists should, you know, be in their uh in their area doing and stuff was, like that. Was it a contest or what was it ongoing where he found Lotto in the first place? Because then she win something to yeah, be able to. I actually saw her um season. Um, it was the uh not growing up hip hop, but the hip hop um something where he had a a, a lot of kid hip hop stars and he was trying to find the the best one of them. Uh, and there were several. So it wasn't okay. growing up hip hop. It wasn't growing up. Okay. Ever. It was uh, another show. And they, had, right. they had competition and she ended up being winning. She was a lot skinny. She was hella skinny. Mm. Very skinny and like just hella, hella red hair. Mm. She was hella co- cool. She was like, her personality was very good. And then I heard him say something too. It was like, everybody feel like he didn't do right by her. Everybody feel he didn't do right by her with the song that they had produced, that they That's had done together. She felt. But the thing about it was just like, the song that they produced and did together it wasn't over-sexualized. Everything she's done <laughs> since then has been over-sexualized. Yeah, and he, didn't, he didn't do no... And so he because that. that he actually focused on the music and her talent and went with it about it a certain way, it wasn't received the way that everybody wanted to because it wasn't over-sexualized. Now that she's doing things a little more over-sexualized and operating a certain way and coming across a certain way, now she's getting that traction. But it's also from the younger generation who, you know... That... The, okay, now here's the ignorance in that um, in that perspective from if it is from the younger generation or just from people that are being critics, if you look at Jermaine Dupree's body of work, he's always focused on the music. Bow Wow wasn't. That's why Snoop and them sent Bow Wow to him. You see what I'm saying? Because when Bow Wow was with Snoop and them and Death Row and he was a little kid, he, he was coming out cussing on the mic. They had to snatch him off stage on our city of hall back then. Cause he came out cussing and you know what I mean? And it was like, nah, we need to send him over there. And he's had a track record with getting young performers that are going to be focused on the music. Chris Cross and them wasn't cussing like that. You know what I'm saying? And so that would be stupid to say, or to believe that it's like, Oh yo, he didn't, he, no, he focused on what you said. He focused on the art. It was him who said it in the interview. Mm. Yeah. I saw he, he, it was him who said in the interview, he was like, yeah, people feel like I didn't do right with, uh, and back and back then she was going by mulatto. Mulatto, yes. Uh-huh. Shorten it to Lotto, start executing differently uh-huh. and rapping different on the mic. Uh-huh. And now all of a sudden Well, the other thing too is you that's a that's a real trend in the industry, and that's where I get kind of confused with the way you're supposed to protect women when they're agreeing to certain things, because it's just like Nicki Minaj. She was against the name Nicki Minaj because she didn't want the perception of Minaj and what that meant on a sexual level, but she accepted it. You understand what I'm saying? And I, and, and now and she wasn't sexualized was when she when she first came out because I remember the um where was the DVDs DVD, that came out? Um, the um not smack, but the um, they're like all the hip all the hip hop artists yeah. doing like 
beef underground stuff. Shit. It wasn't beef. It was something else DVD that, and that's what the first time I seen her. She was super duper skinny, and I mean she had she like sex dead. appeal. You know what I'm saying to a certain degree, but she was about the flow. You know what I mean, and that's now, the direction. And now it's definitely more sexualized. Sexualized, like bro. There's a, there's a song called Pound Town by a female, yeah. and I mean like sexy red. Yeah, yeah it's like it just yeah. She looked yeah. like her room stink. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong when you're right. Bro, did you see the straight face? Like, he really <laughs> believes. Like, no, there ain't no convincing him otherwise, man. Bro, just keep my glasses on in here, man. <laughs> it's, well, because it's, I don't know, like. She said, I never. Nah, never. Moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, we moving on, but not too far. 50 years of hip hop. Well, how do y'all feel? Yo, happy birthday, hip hop, man. Yeah. All right, Happy yeah, birthday yeah, to hip hop. You gotta get right. the sounds and all that to go. Oh, all right, we uh, supposed to. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on, let me see if I. I ain't got enough for you. Uh, got enough for you. Next year. Next year. Next year. Uh, It'd be fit. Yeah, nah, I think man. that. I think it's amazing that, um, how far it's came, and how far it's gonna go when um a lot of people thought that it was just going to be a fad. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, there's been a lot that has happened, transpired, uh, progressed over the time it started and where it is now. And that is definitely a, um, a dope thing. I and how don't... involved it is and everything, too. Oh, yeah. Everything. I just don't like how the actual 50 years of hip-hop has been commercialized. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. everybody want to jump in on it and stuff like, bro, like out in New York, they got they doing metro passes with uh, artists on the back of them. Did you know that? To celebrate fifty years of hip hop. Now, on the same breath, it would be bad. It comes from it would New be York, dope or, yeah, right? Yeah. Hip hop was the birthplace of hip hop is New York, correct? Yeah. Graffiti right. would have been dope. Yeah, they but have like they're doing the Rock Cam, LL yeah. Cool J, KRS One, and uh, Killer Cam on the back of metro passes. Yeah, they should have had somebody spray the trains out of the door. They probably already sprayed. <laughs> they probably already sprayed. <laughs> and if they're not and they listen into this episode, they finna get to spraying. So Hold know. it down. Hold it down. Um, I love it. My opinion. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, I mean yeah. I love like I said, I love everything except the the commercializing of it and everybody trying to get in on the uh profitable financial aspect of it. Like, oh, it's fifty years of hip hop. Let's do something with hip hop. And when y'all ain't never collab with, y'all ain't never been concerned with and you never gave no attention to hip hop. Now that it's fifty years, like, well, let's go ahead and jump on a train and see how we can benefit and profit. Like, I think there's that corny. too, but I also think, and I have to keep reminding myself, this that a lot of the people who are the creators now and are in these positions of like creating like films, movies, TV shows, commercials. Mm -hmm. Um, they they're from our generation. They're, 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 it's not old, a lot of old people sometimes that are in these positions and I think that might be a reason why the door has been opened more for a lot of things especially when it comes to hip hop and black culture it's because the people who are there now uh -huh. are the people that's like, like a lot of the movies are coming back out too the remakes of these movies is because there's yeah, people man, who they actually stop touching they those. definitely have to stop they gotta stop touching those. have either of y'all seen uh White man can't jump. I have not seen. I will not see. That's my energy. Now go on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a lot of people that's like our our age group now that are mm -hmm. the ones who are creating these things, and some of them have to chill. Well, as far as like uh, movies, documentaries, uh, giving background, giving insight, giving a better understanding, I'm all for that. I'm all for that because. If you don't know where it came from, you can't have an understanding of where it's going or truly appreciate how it has evolved. Uh -huh. And so I'm for all of that. But like I said, like people like 50 years of hip hop, we gonna sell this, we gonna sell that. Yeah, gonna, the commercial, that's, commercialization. Yeah, yeah, that's where I have the issue at because so many of these people who are trying to get in on the train for commercializing the 50 years of hip hop have never given a damn about it. Have never put forth any real energy or understanding into it. They just see the 
uh, profitable aspect of it. Yeah, they pick and choose what part of it they want to be involved in. A hundred percent. And I feel like if you haven't been on board and sharing a certain love energy towards Mm -hmm. it initially, then you shouldn't even be allowed. It's like at that point, we should be gatekeeping. Like, that's what have you done real talk. beforehand? You because if you haven't, yeah. no. We yeah. got to get to that. Absolutely not. We, and yeah. then people should be like, wait a minute. What do you mean Kellogg's is doing 50 years of hip-hop boxes? Like, no. No, you guys have, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. difficult for us, too, because culturally, that's inherent in who we are, is that we uh, we allow people to partake. partake. Yeah. In our culture. Yeah. Well, stop inviting people to the barbecue. <sighs> they can't come to the cookout we no more. Vet, okay? Vet, yeah. But he bringing tomahawk steaks. I said no. <laughs> Who made the potato salad? <laughs> said no. You can ship them, but you can't come. I think that... <laughs> I think that... Uh, man, I, I 100% agree. And I think we do need to start gatekeeping. Well, I already know how you feel about it. You mm-hmm. I'm talking big-ass gate, too. You know what I'm saying? So, Electrified, yeah. like <laughs> fifty feet high, <laughs> fifty feet deep. reinforced type. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. You ain't knocking, you ain't knocking these gates right here down at all. Great Danes is guard dog, gate, not yeah. a fence. Yeah, for a real, gate. a straight gate, man. And I think that um, oh, enunciate what you said. That a straight gate. Yeah, I said straight gate. Yeah, straight gate. Yeah, there you go. You see how you see you see that you see that. He, straight gate yeah see he didn't yeah. understand what I was doing though. you know what I'm saying we was, it was like a beat it was kind of like a it was like a beat it was like a beatboxing sure. type of you know you know it was a nod no, to hip hop I'm just making I'm sure say, you know. celebrating pause man <laughs> <laughs> anyways the way um, you stop <laughs> I, I agree I agree with that I also think that on top of the gatekeeping <laughs> that uh that needs to happen, I do have a question with all of these different shows and things that are going on. I mean, you see Nas bring out Lauren Hill and all of this. Everybody's throwing these shows. I'm just kind of curious on where the bread is going what because shows? there's a lot of there's all kinds of shows are going on right now. You know, celebrating 50 years of hip hop, oh, like okay. it's themed. Okay around that are they putting it towards a union or something for the hip hop thank uh, you those who pioneered thank you and um, fathered this culture that we you saying they are or no I'm asking are are they they? oh they should be there should be a uh, social security type fund social security there should be health care where's the hip hop union yeah that that, that for sure right I think that if we had to pay as hip hop um, those who partake in the culture if there was a ten dollar a month fee yeah Hey man, because because I seen I seen a video clip that I was bothered by by MC Shan like really I going about, in I heard about really this. going in on Nas I heard about it and what I what I couldn't stand about it because I got I I like MC Shan I got respect for he's one of the pioneers he and this goes back to us articulating ourselves first of all you're attacking somebody that's a legend just like you're a legend right but what's the root what's the grassroots issue with it you sound like you're probably not doing all that well seeing that some of the things that he was saying was like you know you know feeding his kids and things of that nature feeding like, his what are you family talking about with Nas, well the issue that he had with Nas, he said you know keep my name out your mouth if you if you're gonna do 50 years of hip-hop and you're not gonna you know have me partake in it you, well, what did Nas say that was ill he didn't say anything he's just not included in like the shows and, and things of that nature now i seen Fat Joe said he did his journalism work and apparently, allegedly, um, Shan is hard to work with as far as in. So, okay. That's what they say. Well. If you hard to work with, I'm not reaching out. Well, I don't think that just because somebody has a just because somebody has a problem. I don't think you should have to oblige and be like, well, you know what? He is right. But there's other things that maybe should take place because my thing is like. Niggas is from Queensbridge, nigga. All right, what is we talking about, nigga? You MC Sham, my nigga, they, they KRS One got you out of here a long time ago. Like, but it was over after that. The bridge was over, and then there was there came other people after you. So right, you not being there, you're not a pinnacle. You are a you have a, He's a pinnacle of Queens hip hop for sure. He definitely is. I, I was I had to catch myself. You saw yeah. me. I was, He's about to get I, this. I was about record. to go crazy. My bad, but. It's not, it's not. Necessary. I think that 
it when have you, time. this is this is how I do the math. Artists these days make money off shows. You're not really making any money off streams. You're gonna make money off either shows or some form of endorsements, right? 100%. So with these older, you gotta think these all these older cats. You probably seen all their value in their album covers, them gold chains and them BMWs and in and. With that was it. BBSs? Yeah, that's it. Because the replay value is not happening. They're not anymore. getting, they were not getting nowhere close to the bag that a lot of artists are getting now, right? I wonder if they're even on stream services. Okay. Yeah, they are. Because I, I got some MC Shan in my hip uh, And because they're not mix. making, like Nas is making new music. They're not making new music. The only he one did a call to action. is Melly Mel. He, we have to tell him to stop doing it. Yeah, ASAP. We have to tell him. Because that Eminem diss never was a diss to himself. Mel. You you could produce, you could do a lot of things. You weightlift, like get get to the to the gym. A and R, y'all need to be A and R's. All right, send him a assist. Did you hear it? No, he did that an Eminem this. Hip hop, it started in the park. That was the this. Boys and girls of every age. Yeah. Break dancing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> 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 bro, that was nah, man. yeah, he, yeah. Tell Mel don't ever do don't that do again, that, man. Bro. Fall back. Here. I Look, listened to it. I heard. Yo, another... that is the politest way to tell somebody of authority to shut the hell up. It was he another said, podcast I was listening said, to. Fall back, King. Said, that shit. Fall, <laughs> fall back, King. Usually we say go off, King. He don't nah, fall, fall back, King. King. Just shit, chill. Crazy, you know Relax, man. my lord. Yo, OG, you so I can't be disrespectful. <laughs> just shit, you know, chill. Mel put together a hell of a group. Yeah. He produced a hell of a group. He need to do fifty hip hop trivia. He had to just stop at <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, yo, we'll whisper the answer. <laughs> oh man. Nah, um, I do think that there's a, there should be something in place for these artists because I do see. I think that a lot of the, the the pioneers that are still around may be a little touched because some of them probably do miss the uh, exposure. But I know that they're not comfortably living because they didn't reap the benefits Definitely. of the groundwork that they put down. So there should be some kind of union, some kind of money, um, even if there's an acknowledgement, you know, hey, man, we want to bring you out to the show. You know what I mean? And, and, and just see what you contributed to. It's not always about getting on stage. And some of these artists don't need to be on stage because they just don't have it like that anymore. They can't you hear perform. Frankie Beverly? Man, uh, we're going to stick on hip hop. Don't do that. Did y'all don't do that. <laughs> it's just cold because he was safe you know what i'm saying he was safe here he had a safe space here by not bringing him up man don't don't do that man and hey, get your bag frankie <laughs> <laughs> nah bruh all right yes. so who- why you do that <laughs> oh that's every t- can I listen to the song the same anymore? Yeah, because it ain't gonna sound the same. As what I'm gonna have to listen to it going to sleep so I hypnotize myself. So you don't so you not gonna hear other shit out. You're not gonna hear what you saw. That was crazy. Yeah, man. Don't mm-mm. listen. Anyway, back to what you said, man. Yeah, bringing out the OGs. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got necessarily rap. Just you know, yeah, like this is a pioneer. Relax. This is such and such. I felt like Nas heard our conversation when I talked to you the other day. Because I said, yo, they better do something for Cool Herc. And, da, 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 and he did that show and he brought out Cool Herc. You got to bring out he brought, Cool Herc. He brought out Cool Herc and he brought out his wife. It and, wouldn't have been no party without yeah. Cool Herc. The rest of you niggas wasn't even old enough. Right. Cool Herc was, was old enough and had the damn sense. Nas system. was literally born the month after hip hop started. Yeah, niggas was not old yeah. enough. So, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was wild. No, I mean, even the, even the kids back then, they're like, yeah. y'all, Cool Herc was, was an adult. I yeah, think, yeah. Time, so. Hey, bro, was swole as hell. Jermaine in his, his younger days. Jermaine Dupree, you 50 years old. Nigga. Right? Uh huh. You know that, right? Uh huh. He's like, yeah, I feel like I am hip hop. And I was like, ooh, that's a little bit of a stretch. But hey, you, Jermaine. <laughs> it's a little you bit made of this stretch, mistake before. But, uh, <laughs> but, you're a part of it. You're definitely but, a part of it. Can, can, I, think, I think I know what he means. What, what do you mean? What do you, what do you think he means? All right, so let me ask y'all first what is it that you guys disagree with that statement? As far as he is hip hop, um, or what do you think he means by that? That I would, if I said like I, I would say right now I, I'm hip hop, right? Because it's in my DNA. The you know, 
the appreciation I have for it. It's something that I'm always going to do. As long as I'm able body, I'm always going to make music. I'm always going to try to educate people younger than me about music and the way they do it, writing, whatever it is I know I'm going to share, right? Mm -hmm. I'm hip hop. My responsibility is to, you know, spread what I know based off what I've obtained. Mm -hmm. But the way it's said is it's like, if Jordan wanted to, and I don't think he ever would, he said, I am basketball. Man, you sound like he was getting beat up, man. If if I if I if I heard him say that, mm-hmm. I wouldn't argue against it. And there's people that came before Jordan. Right. But the whole point is, is what he's contributed, what he's done, how he's dominated, how he's influenced, right? I could agree with that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. With Jermaine Dupri, what he's contributed, you can also tell who he was influenced by. Right. And who has inspired him. So. I mean, he's been around and been in it for a while. Just like yeah. what that video, what yep. vi- he was dancing. Yep. He used to be yeah. a dancer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, even at a young age, he's always been around. Involved. He's been involved. He's been influenced. So I kind of understand what he's saying by that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I was, that's where I kind of, yeah. Cause as you said that, I started to think about it and I'm like, okay, well, all right. Yeah. If anything, he's a child of the game. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a dig either. No, it's like, I grew up in this. This is my DNA because uh, he's not the only one that can say that. I mean, you look at Bobby Brown, right? What at the, like his prime, Diddy was one of his backup dancers, and Suge Knight used to be one of his bodyguards. So look oh, how I, long these guys have been around before they had their point in the history of hip hop, where they had a you know had reigned supreme in some kind of way. So, so everybody has, everybody can say that. Do, do you think that he's? Well, that's what I, I believe. Yeah, everyone who um is in that realm, I think they can say that. Yeah. Like, but I agree. I think he should be able to say that too, because for me. It makes sense. Like I don't think he's saying he's the, he is like the, the end all be all. Yeah, 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 yeah Hip hop yeah, is, but yeah. I think because talking hip hop got go through me. Yeah, right. Melly Mel. Yo, yo, got the Melly Mel spirit. Nah, but I, I, I think that's what he means. Like he's lived it almost professionally most of his life. Yeah different facets so it's like yeah. he's a writer producer created a lot of different groups dancer dancer yeah. he's seen it all he's done it all kind of yeah deep. so I, I i agree with that yeah he could definitely throw his weight around i mean people in that that have accomplished what he's accomplished can definitely and have the right to throw their weight around you know what i'm saying and um but i also feel because of that success not just jermaine dupree whether it's dr dre timberland all of these guys artists I think their responsibility now that they're living comfortably, I'm assuming those should be a a lot of those individuals should come together and say, all right, we need to do something for the ones that started it. That were still here. For sure. Yeah. Like I think even just having like, obviously the the industry, that would be something they 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 would do. Um, But shoot, even as like the, the people who are the consumers of hip hop, I think Mm -hmm. it would be, dope to have something that could be a fund that could be donated to us. You mean like us? Yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Buy my CD and give me some insurance. <laughs> oh, so, the fact that my man said it with the yard, the, oh, I got it. Nigga streaming this shit. No, I ain't got that shit. Nigga. I ain't never listened to no Furious 5, so uh, <laughs> oh, Grandmaster, I know is in Kung Fu, so uh, <laughs> yeah, he's ready to fight. I think I could take one of them. They old. <laughs> Watch this man get a uh, a deal with kicks and sneakers, and uh, yeah. So who uh, you got? Uh, wearing my new stuff. Yeah, man, we got Melly Mel coming through. Who? Uh, Mel coming through like, hey. <laughs> I heard what you said. <laughs> hey, sucker. You the young brother that's been talking about me. So I'll just tell her, meet me at the park. <laughs> Pioneer's a symbol. <laughs> hey, 
my man come through with the four or five people shit. come out yeah. of the cane. The best walkers. star with no undershirt. Black spades. <laughs> <laughs> so who's that? Baby oil. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm getting stomped on by a group of old heads talking like that, there you go. Get him in the chest right there. Yeah. Yeah, Yo, mix them. Mix them. <laughs> I'm never showing my face again if I'm getting stomped out by some old heads like that, dog. <laughs> Kick him where it hurts. I don't know. <laughs> Stomp out, yo, yo, came. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we out of here, man. <laughs> yo, we out here on that, this your boy Dizzy D Spill. You've been tuning into the Notion Podcast with my co-host in the building, Jelani Evans, former Poe. You already know what to do. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave comments if you disagree with us, if you agree with us. You know what I'm saying? Turn that notification on at the bell. Tune in every week to a new episode. Until next time, peace.